Hello, everyone. My name is Maria Papasanasiu. I'm a lecturer here at the Department of Chemical Engineering, and I lead the computational group, which hopefully I'll demystify for you in the next few minutes. Uh, so I lead the team of PhD, MSc and undergraduate students. Uh, we do research, but also we're involved in teaching activities in the department. My research is focused on the development of computational tools, which as a term, I know it sounds for some people scary, for some other people a little bit abstract. So in a nutshell, what we do in very simple terms is that we try to understand um, different phenomena or different production processes and express those in mathematical terms and have those tools to help us either understand the a manufacturing process better or uh, find a better way to run a process on and so forth. How our research contributes, if you like, to the society. So all of those tools we develop, they find application in the discovery, manufacturing, but also distribution of more personalized and hopefully uh, more cost efficient, cheaper, in other words, medicine and vaccines for people. So what I find exciting about uh, the research that our lab does uh, is primarily the combination of many of different disciplines. So we are sort of working in a junction of biology, chemistry and mathematics, which is something that my younger self could never imagine. And it's a fun fact that I'm a chemical engineer by training, but when I was finishing high school, um, chemical engineering was nowhere in my radar uh, as as a career, let's say, option. And that's because it was not very clear to me what chemical engineers do. And I was lucky, I think, to come across uh, my professor in physics at the time in high school, who introduced me to the subject of chemical engineering. And then I saw that all of these different disciplines that I liked could actually be combined. And there is something called chemical engineering that gives you this option. So going back to what I find personally exciting about the stuff that I do is the combination of all of those different sectors and sciences. But at the same time, how fast uh, research is evolving and how many different questions pop up once you solve the first one. My research is focusing on how we can deliver personalized, cheaper, hopefully, but also faster medicine and vaccines to as many people as possible. Um, and there are specific things we're looking into this process. One of the main issues we're trying to resolve, or if you like questions to answer, is can we produce those pharmaceuticals or those vaccines in a faster way, cheaper way, but also can we ensure that those processes we use in um, drug, drug manufacturing, for example, can always ensure that we get therapeutics and drugs of a certain um, purity. So we need to be really mindful when we talk about medicines, for example, of how pure they are, because they are going essentially into one's uh, bloodstream, into one's immune system. And so we have to be very, very thorough in the processes we use and the conditions we use for those drugs to be manufactured. So this is um, one of the main uh, questions we're trying to solve. The second, which I find also very topical, is how can we distribute therapeutics and vaccines faster to the world? And a very nice example, which um, showed me how relevant the research can be, was actually the, the COVID-19 vaccine distribution. So before, long before COVID was in the landscape, we have been doing research in supply chain optimization, which in simple words is, how can we find better routes, uh, more flexible routes to distribute therapeutics, vaccines, or any other product for that matter to people? So we have been doing this work before. And then when COVID um, came around, uh, our work was directly applicable to this uh, grand challenge of how do we get the vaccines to as many people as possible, as fast as possible, and especially um, it was even more challenging for those vaccines that required ultra um, low freezing storage because it's it's very they are actually characterized by very particular conditions uh, to store and distribute. So that's another really interesting question we have been looking into uh, recently. We also do research in the same uh, sort of um, 
if you like framework around supply chain optimization for personalized therapies, you may have come across them in the news. Uh, recently, they are called chimeric antigen receptor T cells or CAR T cells. These are very particular therapeutics, right? So we have been used we have been used to dealing with uh, therapeutics and medicines like, for example, paracetamol that are produced in very big quantities and they serve a large amount of people. But CAR T's are very special because they are personalized therapeutics, which means actually that the starting material is cells from the patient's own bloodstream. So the whole process depends and starts from the patient giving his own T cells uh, to the manufacturer, essentially, so they can be re-engineered and understand, recognize, and kill cancer. So from a supply chain perspective, distribution perspective, this poses great challenges because we need to align all the manufacturing and distribution activities around the patient's schedule. Now, if we factor in also the uh, emergency of, of those therapeutics that is directly linked with the disease they are currently addressing, this uh, complicates the problem even more. And so we need to be very responsive to the, the patient schedule. So we need to make sure that all the actions are coordinated around the availability and the medical condition of the patient. My lab is working on the development, as I said before, of computational tools, so mathematical models. And our lab, if you like, is simply speaking a computer or a cluster of computers. So compared to experimental laboratories, we don't have those fancy uh, lab um, space and, and tubes and so on and so forth. But I, I'm um, really hoping that you find equally fancy a computer screen and a code running behind. So this is our laboratory environment. So experiments in our world are a bit different. They're computational experiments and our platform is a mathematical model. Now, what is a mathematical model? A mathematical model is a set of equations like the ones we have been learning since uh, school that all together they describe a system. They may be describing the way um, cells grow in a reactor. Uh, they may be describing a fermentation process. Fermentation process, for example, can be found in the production of beer. So this is not very, let's say, an alien concept. And so we look into the system and we try through the combination of physics, chemistry, biology, depending on, on the system that we have at hand, to explain those interactions in mathematical terms. So how does the cell growth look like, for example? Um, how fast do they grow? Uh, can we estimate uh, this, um, this function or, or this interaction? So once we have a good understanding of what's going on and we have a good basis uh, of equations to put together, we then simulate those on a computer. And we start putting together the pieces of our puzzle. It's quite challenging to know whether your mathematical model is reliable. And what we usually do is that we aim to simulate, to experiment on something that has already happened. So we take data from already um, completed processes or scenarios that have uh, been uh, run in the past. To give you an example with COVID, if we were to build a model that describes the supply chain, we would then look uh, at any other vaccine like the flu vaccine, and we would try to see, does the model capture the general understanding of how vaccines are distributed, for example. And, and then once we have a good agreement between what has happened in the past and what the model is doing, then we can move forward and use those mathematical tools, computational tools for um, forecasting, right, for prediction. And this is where the whole story becomes very exciting because we can use the models, the mathematical models, to run thousands of different experiments and see how would our system, our reactor, our supply chain would perform under a thousand different what-if scenarios. And this is something that a wet lab alone wouldn't be able to do because a thousand experiments in a wet lab would take so much time and so much money to perform that it would be inefficient. 
So the real beauty, if you like, of engineering and what we do is actually the combination of the work that I described to you that my lab does with wet lab experiments, because one is not substituting the other. The one is complementing the other at 100%. And so we also work very close with people who do experiments, who have the real world case study. And what we are aiming towards is to validate, as we say in our world, to, to double check that our mathematical model, our computational tool is doing exactly what we see in the lab. And then we reverse, we flip the question and we say, so can now the lab confirm that what we have seen in the computer is true? Right. So I think this is where the whole thing becomes exciting. And then you see where exactly in the puzzle you, you start fitting. Chemical engineering for me is a very powerful uh, career option or, or study option, if you like, because it gives you sort of a um, 360 training. We learn about so many things that have to do with physics, we have to do with chemistry, biology, maths, of course, is a very big component. And with the rise of biological sciences, with all these medical advancements that we have seen and so many different medicines taking the personalized route, which means that therapies now even more and more start becoming um, tailored, if you like, to the needs of a single patient. I think there engineering and chemical engineering finds a lot of exciting applications uh, for the future. So the combination of engineering with medicine and biology has a tremendous potential from where I stand to break uh, stereotypes, if you like, of how we understand diseases, of how we treat diseases, of how we manufacture drugs. My work involves many different tasks. So primarily uh, I do research and I teach. I guess these are the two main things I do. And my I had work before COVID and after COVID, and they share some things, but they are also quite different in some other things. Um, I would say that before COVID, I used to travel a lot about my work, uh, for my work, and I was talking about my work in conferences, in meetings, etc. That was a very fun part of what I do, because apart from disseminating my work and talking to people about what I do, there was a huge element of uh, traveling, learning new cultures, meeting new people. I still meet new people, but through the screen. And that takes a lot of the fun away, I have to say. Um, although I see benefits in how digital our life has become, I really look forward to resuming traveling. This is something I really enjoy. And I like the fact that I could combine it with my work. Teaching is a very uh, central component of my job, which is very close to my heart. It's my one opportunity to transmit not only the knowledge, but actually the passion I have for chemical engineering and help students see why this is a useful discipline and help them broaden their horizons. And teaching is not only through a classical course, it's also through projects, it's also through various other interactions where I have the chance to talk to students about what I do, about uh, the module that I teach. And so there is a learning uh, experience, but the learning is, um, it, it goes two ways. Because every time I teach a class at a different cohort, I also learn stuff. I learn how to improve myself. Uh, all the way to opening up new subjects I've never thought about through the questions that I get. And I find this really, really exciting. And the third part, which I guess, thanks to my job, I'm able to do this, is to advocate for engineering and talk about the things that inspired me to become an engineer. And at the same time, all those different challenges uh, I face as a female in, a, in STEM, if you like, and, and how we can actually contribute towards that. And finally, uh, along the same lines, how important it is for us to follow what we like, despite what we may think other people want from us. So at school, I also had a hard time choosing engineering because um, I'm a girl and engineering sounds like something a boy would do. 
especially coding. So I ended up doing mathematical models. That was nowhere close to what I was thinking about myself, but I think that's what I was born for. So if I were to talk to my younger self, I would just say, well, don't think about all the rest. Think about what you like and, and do that and the rest will follow. So I think this is another part I'm now able, thanks to my job, to do and hopefully inspire some people uh, to, to follow, let's say, what their heart desires.